Hey everyone, this is Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly with the Samsung Transform Ultra. The Transform Ultra is the follow-up to the uh, Samsung Transform, which was an affordable phone. In fact, uh, Wirefly often had the Transform going for free, and the Transform Ultra will likewise be an affordable phone. So, uh, you know, I know that a lot of you out there are interested in the latest, greatest, cutting-edge, expensive Android cell phones, but the fact is that there's a huge market for these. Uh, Wirefly sold just buckets and barrels and shiploads of the Transform Ultra. In fact, we're continuing to sell it. Um, as uh, the, the uh, manufacturing of the Transform winds down, uh, we just sold thousands and thousands of Samsung Transforms, and we expect to do the same for the Transform Ultra because this is an affordable phone. It's not necessarily packed with the latest high-tech bells and whistles, but I wasn't terribly impressed with the original Samsung Transform, and I am much more impressed with the Transform Ultra, and I hope to tell you why. Now, this phone is available on both Sprint and Boost Mobile, as far as I can tell. Those are both the same phones. This says Sprint on the back. The one for Boost says Boost on the back. Otherwise, as far as I can tell, they're the same phones. They're both 3G phones that run on Sprint's CDMA 3G network. So let me give you some of the specs uh, on the Transform Ultra. As I said already it's a 3G phone. It's got a 1 gigahertz processor. It's a uh, single core processor and it has 512 megabytes of processor RAM. This is a 3.5 inch LCD display with a resolution of 320 by 480. So it's not the highest resolution display that's out there, but uh, there's a flip side to that, which I'll get to. It runs Android 2.3. In fact, I think uh, this phone has Android 2.3.4. It does have a front-facing camera, which I think is right there. That's a VGA uh, resolution front-facing camera, which means the resolution is 640 by 480. On the back, it's a 3 megapixel rear camera. You can see it has an LED flash. That's the speaker right there. Now, the uh, rear camera can take video at a resolution of 640 by 480, which again is uh, VGA resolution. When it comes to video, that's often referred to as DVD quality resolution. I will have a video for you that we'll play a little later on. Now, uh, one of the things that this has that makes it nice is a dedicated camera shutter button right there. Let's take a little bit of a tour around the camera. There's the on-off switch, of course, that puts the phone to sleep as well. There's a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. It's got a little loop here that you can uh, put a little charm or decoration on if you wanted it. Here is the volume up-down rocker. On the bottom, there's a standard micro USB port. And uh, pretty much that's it. Under the cover, there's a 2 gigabyte micro SD card. So it's got a 2 gig micro SD card pre-installed. It has uh, 2 gigs of micro, excuse me, it's got 2 gigs of storage uh, on board the phone. However, 1 gig of that is filled up. You only get about 1 gigabyte of available storage. So out of the box, you've only got about 3 gigabytes of available storage. Now, of course, uh, the micro SD card is removable and replaceable. You can get an 8 gig micro SD card for 10 or $15 and a, a 16 gig for about $25. So you can really increase the RAM uh, excuse me, the storage space on this phone if you want to. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, play a YouTube video. There's one that, uh, excuse me, there's one that I, uh, let me come back to that now. There's one that I recently uploaded uh, to YouTube. It's one that I have on my own personal channel and it's a uh, about the lemons, the 24 hours of lemons race which occurred at Charlotte about a month or so ago. There we go. So now this is running in HQ mode, which is its highest quality mode. You can hear the volume. The 24 hours of lemons is a fun car race, and it's meant to be easy for people to enter and easy for people to compete. And there are uh, some requirements, of course, and there are some rules, but the rules are meant to be fun and make it competitive, yet still allow everybody to enjoy him or herself. As you can tell, people have a lot okay. of fun with them. That's enough for that. 
Uh, you can see it did an okay job. Uh, it actually looks better to me looking straight at the camera at the uh, phone than it does looking at uh, what the phone is picking up, uh, what the camera is picking up from the phone. But uh, it's reasonably clear. Uh, now uh, you can see there's some black lines at top and bottom. So you're getting 480 pixels this way, probably only about 400. Uh, excuse me, probably only about 280 or so pixels this way. So it's generally, even though it's in the high quality mode, it's generally low resolution. But, you know, it's still okay for watching a uh, video from YouTube. Okay, that's what a YouTube video looks like. Now, you'll notice that I've loaded some of my favorite benchmark tests here. I'm going to go ahead and run Quadrant with this. First, I'm going to look at the system information. You see that it's running Android 2.3.4. You see here that it's a 1 gigahertz processor. In other words, it's a 1000 megahertz processor. And there's the memory component. It's uh, 512 megabytes of RAM. There's the resolution. We're going to go back now and I'm going to run the uh, standard uh, quadrant benchmark and I'll turn the camera back on when we're getting close to wrapping up the benchmark test. This is the last of the 3D visual tests in Quadrant. I do want to get the results. And this says that the score is 2,150. That's 2,150. That is a pretty darn good score. And there's a reason for that darn good score. The reason why the score is so good is because this display is 320 by 480. So there's a lot fewer pixels to move around on this display than there is with a high-end phone. So the same 1000 giga, excuse me, the same 1 gigahertz processor has less work to do with respect to this display, so it can concentrate on doing other things more speedily. And there you go. You get a quadrant score that's kind of knocking on the heels of some of the new dual core phones that we have. Uh, that's really not a bad score. I mean, that's in the same kind of ballpark as the Quadrant score that you get in the uh, HTC Evo 3D, which runs on Sprint. So, um, this is a pretty darn quick phone, and it's quick because of the relatively low resolution display. If you can deal with a relatively low resolution display, then uh, you're going to be rewarded with a pretty fast phone. Okay, now we're talking about the Transform Ultra. I didn't mention so far, up until now, the fact that it has a keyboard. Look at the keys. They're nice black keys with big bright white letters on them. Easy to see. One of the problems I had with the original Transform is that they were gray keys with relatively small letters on them, and it was kind of hard to see the keys. Uh, no problem here. It's a four-row keyboard. You have to hit the, uh, the function button in order to get at the numbers. But overall, it's not a bad keyboard. It's pretty easy to do with your fingertips, and uh, as keyboards go, not bad. Nice big keys, and again, I like that they're easy to see. Okay, now I took some pictures, as I always do, with the Transform Ultra. So let's go ahead and take a look at my pictures. I set up a little still life on my desk, and I thought this still life looked pretty good. The uh, Transform Ultra's 3 megapixel camera did a nice job of focusing. When I did a macro shot, I got a lot closer. Here's what the macro shot looked like. Again, not too bad. The red, green, and blue pinheads look pretty good. And uh, when I go all the way in uh, and use the full resolution, the focus is actually surprisingly good. Then I back off and I get some flesh tones with my favorite models, Luis and Jen. So here's the flesh tone test. This is kind of washed out. I took the picture twice. It was washed out both times. Um, you know, the focus is pretty good. I like the glint in the eye. And uh, it's, you know, it's usable. Not a great picture because it's so uh, overexposed. Then I took the camera outside, I took the phone outside to shoot some video, and here's what the video looked like from the Samsung Transform Ultra. This is video from the Samsung Transform Ultra. Now this is uh, 640 by 480 video, better described as VGA. It's not intended to be really high quality or anything. It, uh, basically is kind of an afterthought they put on the phone so it does have a little bit of video and uh, I'm interested to see what the audio sounds like however so this is video from the Samsung Transform Ultra that building there is the Wirefly building here in Northern Virginia 
I was actually uh, reasonably impressed with the video. Yes, it's 480p video. It's not very high resolution, uh, but the video was okay. The contrast was pretty strong, maybe a little too strong, but the audio was exceptional. So I give the Transform Ultra for having very good audio to go along with its okay video. Again, it's 480p video, not very high resolution. It's not HD quality. It's best called DVD quality video. So what do I think overall about the Samsung Transform Ultra? If you want an inexpensive phone, and there probably is going to come a time when this is very inexpensive, if you know what I mean, uh, this actually is a much better phone than the original Samsung Transform. So I, I recommend it if you're looking for a low-cost Android starter phone. If you don't need all the bells and whistles from an Android phone, but you still want the touch screen, you want the ability to quickly look something up on Google or get on the internet and check a store's hours, for instance, like I did just the other day, this is a pretty darn good phone. It has a very usable keyboard. It shows YouTube videos reasonably well. The audio recording quality is quite good when you are shooting video with this. The photography capability is acceptable. It's three megapixel. You're not going to want to blow that up into poster size, but it's okay for snapshots and to share with somebody or to upload to Facebook. So, uh, you know, as inexpensive, affordable phones go, this has got lots of power because the processor doesn't have to worry about dealing with a very high resolution display. So I think the Transform Ultra will be a very high mover phone. If you want a sliding keyboard phone that's affordable, that works very smoothly, and look at how easily that goes from page to page. Let's take a look at the apps, and that's at the bottom there, but it scrolls well. Those are all my apps. So see how nicely they scroll up and down? Very responsive because of the relatively low resolution display. Now, by the way, if you want to buy a phone, free or otherwise, Wirefly would like to be your phone supplier. So if you enjoy these videos, we think that you should give Wirefly a try when it comes time to buying your next phone. And hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly. Thanks for watching.